Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jeremy Rodewald and I'm a system specialist over here at Aladtech. Uh, what we're going to be walking through today is Aladtech uh, kind of in a high level view and specifically looking at how uh, healthcare, long-term care uh, departments could use Aladtech for their scheduling needs. Today's webinar uh, is going to be going through uh, kind of our Alad Tech walkthrough. Uh, I'm going to start looking at what we call our member database. Uh, you're going to be able to see where you can keep track of employee information going forward. Uh, we'll focus on some of our scheduling views, how you can schedule employees going forward, how you can send out some coverage alerts, uh, our customizable forms, our reports that come from all of those schedules and from those forms. Uh, and then we'll uh, push it over to uh, Q&A as well. So as, as people have questions, don't hesitate to uh, ask those questions over on your dashboard side and we'll try to address them as they come in. I'm going to pivot over here from my, my uh, slide deck and actually jump into uh, an actual system. This is a, a system that you can also access from our public website. So this is what we call a generic demo. Uh, you'll notice the very first thing about Aladtech is that we are 100% cloud-based. So this specific URL happens to be aladtech.com forward slash healthcare webinar 2021. Uh, every one of our unique customers has their own URL, their own website to get into the system. For the most part here, we'll be looking at the desktop view. So what uh, employees and admin would be seeing when they log in from a computer or a laptop, but I'll also focus on jumping over to the cell phone side of it, the mobile platform. As you can see, she is actually holding that here in the picture, what our cell phone version looks like. I'll switch over to that on the end side or at the end of the presentation so that you can see what a member would see on their side. The first thing to note here is this homepage. You can always customize our homepage however you'd like to. Uh, I generally start with a picture uh, we generally have some videos that get new departments off and running, uh, just kind of giving them an idea of what they can do in the software and where to find that. But the most important part of the homepage is actually this dashboard over here on the right. When you're logged into our system, the dashboard is always uh, specific to the person that's logged in. As a supervisor, you'll notice that you've got some change requests. When we talk about change requests in Alad Tech, those would be all of the pending requests that are coming from your end users, whether it be time off, vacation, sick leave requests, whether it be signups as people are trying to sign up for open positions in the future, uh, or lastly, trades. If you guys allow your RNs, your CNAs, uh, your LPNs to trade shifts back and forth in the system. In addition to those change requests here, if you are looking to use our software, not only for scheduling, but also to keep track of any expiring certifications, trainings, licenses, things like that, you'll notice there's a small section here that gives you a quick look at anyone that has an expired or anyone that's got an expiring within the next range of time uh, certifications. It gives you a little report here that shows you exactly who and when those certifications or licenses are expiring. The nice part here is that the system gives you a report, and if need be, you can also pair some of that information with your schedules up here as well, so that your schedules will let you know if you're not meeting your right qualifications at any given time. The events here as well allows you just to post bulletin board material in the system so that people can see those events uh, right when they log in. The homepage here is pretty self-explanatory. Some of this information is actually coming from each person's profile. You'll notice that can be housed in what we call our member database. Our member database here, you have the ability to store as much HR information as you'd like to. The most important pieces that we generally see our customers keep track of would be phone numbers and emails, as that's gonna help drive notifications from our system to the right uh, employees through a text or an email. Uh, we see date hired kept track of a lot, uh, especially if seniority is a factor in your department. Uh, but you can really get as specific as you'd like to here. Certifications, contact information, 
addresses, anything like that that you'd like to keep track of, you can store here in this member database. All of this information here is actually coming from each individual person's profile. So if we jump into Nicholas Alston's profile here, this is what your members would see on their side. They actually have the ability to edit some of these fields, starting with their messaging information. Um, a very important part of the system is to have that mobile phone number and a corresponding mobile phone provider in place. And then also having an email. This primary email is also gonna be what the system sends, uh, what we call a generate password email. That allows your members uh, to get into the system in the first place where they can actually go through and create their own password the very first time they log in. You'll notice that there's a notification section as well where your employees can go through and customize where they would like to get notifications in the future, uh, whether it be for their time off requests, whether it be for their signups and trades. We do also see a lot of our end users prefer to get an upcoming shift reminder. So if they decide they can go through and just tell the system that they'd like to get a reminder 24 hours before the start of every shift that they have scheduled in Alad Tech. The work qualifications right below here uh, in our system, you'll have the ability to create as many schedules and as many positions as you'd like to. Uh, but it's important to know that as you create those schedules and as you create those positions, the system also is going to want to know who can work those schedules, who can work those positions from a qualification side. This is really telling the system uh, where can Nicholas Alston ever be scheduled, where can he ever sign up for a shift in the first place, uh, and then who can he possibly trade with based off of where his qualifications are set. Everything else down here on the My Info side is that customizable piece where you can keep track of whatever information you'd like to from an HR point of view. All of this My Info information is pushing back to the member database. Uh, even though we, we keep track of it here in Alad Tech, you'll notice that there's a button up in the upper right that does allow you to export this information back out to a CSV file. So uh, if you'd like to store it in Alad Tech and push it back out into Excel, you can do that. We do have some API capabilities as well. So if you want to house this type of information in a different system and push it back into a lad tech through our API, that's also a possibility as well. I've been logged in here uh, so far this entire time as an administrator. The majority of what your members would be seeing when they log in can be done right from one page. I'm actually going to log in here as Nicholas Alston. The majority of what your members will need to do can be done right from their My Schedule page. So when they hover over Schedules and click on My Schedule, this is their personal calendar. It's gonna show them all of the days that they're scheduled to work in blue. As your members are scheduled in Alad Tech, more often than not, we see departments that will schedule their rotations or their full-time staff on their repeating patterns day over day, week over week, and possibly even months into the future. And as those employees need to take a day off, all they need to do is click on the blue day. This is where the system will prompt those members to do one of two different actions. Uh, requesting a trade, if you allow those staff to trade and go find their own replacement with a, a peer that has the same qualifications, they can do that. We also have what we call request time off. This would actually be the action of the employee going through a supervisor and putting in some sort of time off request, vacation, sick leave, PTO. Those are the three most common that we see departments utilize. With that said, you'll have the flexibility to add whatever you'd like to here, comp time, bereavement, uh, FMLA, all of those type of time off codes. You have the customization to add those onto this drop down list. As your members put in those requests and click the request time off, that would instantly send a message to whoever, whoever the system recognizes as the supervisor over that specific schedule. So you'll notice there's a little pending admin approval. As those members put in the request, they've now asked for it. And then as a supervisor approves it, it'll physically drop them off of the schedule and also notify the individuals that need to get notified that their schedules were affected. Looking at this My Schedule for Nicholas Alston, I can see that he is someone that is working on a rotation, specifically Sunday through Thursday, 
on the ER side in triage on the mornings from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. With that said, we do see quite a bit of departments that ask their employees to log their availability ahead of time. So if you're the type of department that needs to go through and have their employees put in all of their availability for the rest of the month, possibly into the next month, they can go through and do that. You'll notice when they add their availability in place, that automatically populates onto the schedule. And then more importantly, it's communicating to the supervisors what days Nicholas Alston can work in the first place. So what days he's available, if you'd like to, they can also put in what days they are unavailable to work. We see this a little bit more common with uh, departments that are building their schedules day by day or week by week, just based off of when their staff relayed that they can work. Uh, so if you do build your schedules a little bit more fluidly uh, and, and not so much in the future, that availability can be beneficial. The last way we see departments staff their employees is by actually pushing out open shifts and having those members react to where those open shifts are on the schedule. So you'll notice here, Nicholas Alston can see that there's an open shift on Friday, possibly an open overtime shift for him. Uh, if, if you end up going that route, Nicholas Alston can just click on the open shift, click on sign up, and very similar to a time off request, that would instantly send a message to the supervisors that's letting them that Nicholas Alston is interested in working that open shift on Friday night on the triage side. You can also see down here uh, over next week, uh, for the most part, uh, I'll be showing you what the schedules look like for a hospital or a long-term care facility. Uh, but with that said, over the last six months to a year, we have seen quite a bit of departments use our software for uh, vaccine, uh, the COVID vaccine. We've seen some departments start to use it just uh, in terms of backfilling more RNs, LPN, CNAs for COVID relief. Uh, so if you end up using the software just for that type of process, you'll notice down here, Nicholas Alston can also sign up on some of those vaccine teams that you set up in the software as well. The last piece here on the My Schedule page that I see the members uh, use uh, almost instantly would be this little Share My Schedule link. This will walk them through the instruction guide on how to add their My Schedule or how to sync their Aladtech My Schedule up with an external calendar, uh, Google Calendar, Outlook, and the iPhone side would be the three most common ones that we see. This just allows your members to sync it up with their spouse's calendar, their kid's softball calendar, uh, possibly if they work at two different agencies. Uh, that's very beneficial just to sync this up all in one universal calendar. I've been looking at this now uh, from the member's point of view on that My Schedule side as a supervisor. The calendar that you may end up living on more on a day-to-day -day basis would be this full monthly calendar. This is my personal preference, the monthly calendar view. I think this one shows nicely what schedules you have, uh, what today looks like, and what tomorrow throughout the next uh, upcoming days looks like. With that said, you'll notice up here in the upper right, we also have some pay period views, some weekly views. Uh, we've got a daily summary view that looks more like what departments would call a daily roster view. Uh, on this monthly calendar here, you'll notice that anytime someone takes time off, it automatically drops them off of the schedule that they were supposed to be on in the first place. And if need be, this is telling the system that we have dropped below our minimum staffing. So you have the ability to set the minimum staffing in the back setup. When you click on this little red exclamation point, it's gonna tell you where you're currently below your minimum staffing. So the system wants to always alert supervisors where they have fallen short from the, the member side or from the scheduling side. To pair along with that minimum staffing, there's an open shift here. And anytime there's an open shift in our software, what the supervisors are instantly gonna see is this little blue fine coverage link, that blue envelope is your alert as a supervisor that you can send out a message to your staff that lets them know about that open shift. When you click on that blue envelope, it's gonna bring you into our coverage alert page. 
And from an administrator's point of view, all you need to do now is click on the open shift, tell the system what members you want to send this to in the first place. By default, this is always going to go to anyone that's unscheduled. So any of the people that can physically work that spot in the first place based off of their qualifications, their permissions, their schedules, uh, how many hours they've already worked in a row, things like that. If you'd like to, you can always send this out into different groups of people uh, based off of how you set those up in the system uh, or even possibly by individuals. So if you already want to, if you already know the members that you'd like to send this type of coverage alert to, you can do that. And then when you hit send in the lower right, you'll notice what happens is the system automatically sends out a pre-filled email and text message to anyone available that says the your department is looking for an RN to come back and work on the ER schedule Thursday the 15th from 7 a.m. and or I guess in this case from 3 p.m. until 11 p.m. And on the email side, anyone that's interested in working that shift will have a direct link right at the bottom that allows them to sign up for that shift or allows them to jump back into the system to sign up for it uh, just with that direct link. This piece of it here is a very big part of the software, just communication from the supervisors to the members to let them know when and where there are some holes in the schedule. And then it allows the members to come back and sign up for those shifts as they feel uh, or as they see necessary to go along with those open shifts that we're already seeing on Thursday and Friday over the next two days, you'll notice that there's some corresponding signups down here. These are the people that have actually reacted to those open shifts and have physically signed up for them. As a supervisor, you can approve them right from here if you'd like to. Uh, I actually see most of our customers will tend to click on that open shift. This will bring you into what we call our hourly editor page. This is where you can make manual day-to-day -day changes to the schedule. You'll notice that long white bar here in the middle of the ER schedule. That's coming from that employee taking time off. There's that minimum staffing warning we see again here. And the bottom half of the screen is showing us everyone that's physically available to work that shift. And the people that have reacted and signed up for it float right to the top. The people that have put in their availability, so proactively have said that this is a day that they could work, they also float to the top. And then everyone else that's qualified but ne hasn't necessarily reacted or put in their availability kind of fall right below that. As a supervisor, you'll have the ability to either approve some of these signups if you'd like to move people around from your morning shift to your night shift or your afternoon shift, you can do that as well. Uh, however you see fit. If you are going to go through the signups and physically approve the right person, you can click on those pink signups. It'll give you a quick look at the time and date that each person that has reacted to that shift when they signed up for it. So you'll notice Michelle has signed up for it at 2.20. Jeffrey Newman has signed up for it at 3.28. Sometimes it's nice to know who got to it first, if that's how you guys divvy out those open shifts in the first place. If this is something that's pushing them into a lead or a differential shift, or if they're on callback, you can also assign what we call a time type. Most departments would call those a pay code or a working code. It just helps differentiate, not only on the schedule, but when we look at the reports here later, you're gonna see that these are, are slightly different hours from the regular uh, 40 hour work week or 80 hour pay period. As soon as we approve it, You'll notice what happens is Michelle floats up into that spot on callback and the other pink sign up down here disappeared. Both of those employees would have just got a notification from our software, one of which would have gotten one saying they've been approved the sign up request and the other one of which would have gotten a message saying they've been denied that sign up request. Uh, we do see quite a bit of departments that like to split those shifts as well. So it's worth noting here on the hourly editor that everything is drag and droppable. So if you need to drag Michelle and tell the system that she's gonna work the first four hours of that shift and the other four hours that Dan Atkinson is gonna work, you can always go through and split those shifts however you feel necessary. Uh, a lot of times our departments like to keep track of how many hours people are already working in a given week, possibly how many hours they've worked in a given month, uh, it just helps uh, level out how many hours you're giving to each employee 
throughout that month. And a lot of times we see departments will cut down on how much overtime they are incurring just because they're uh, fairly distributing the hours that are on the schedule. This hourly editor page is just a page that your supervisors would see. Your, your actual members don't have the ability to see or to manipulate the schedules. This is just something that you can decide on the back end who should have permissions to make these changes in the first place. The last thing I like to point out here on the scheduling side is that you always have the ability to add a note to every uh, any given schedule. And what will happen is there'll be a little sticky note that gets attached to that schedule. This is kind of a bulletin board type of note that your members are gonna see not only when they're in the software and looking at their schedules, but you'll notice you can also tell the system that it, this should be included into their shift reminders. And then you'll notice here that it's saying that Harry is a new orientee and he'll be working with the first shift. Well, we can see that not only is that a message on the schedule, but it pairs up with what's happening actually on the schedule that Harry is down here as an orientee working with a couple of triage nurse or RNs up here in the first place. Any change that we make here on that hourly editor tool is instantly affecting our schedule. So now when we go down and look at tomorrow, we don't see that open shift anymore on the ER side. Michelle and Dan are our two employees that we have backfilled to work for Ben Proctor in the first place. Uh, and that'll instantly be reflective, not only here on the monthly calendar, but if you like to look at that daily summary view or what most departments would call their daily roster view, this one allows you to see the schedule name on the left, the start and the stop time for each of those positions are in their own column here. And then the people that are sitting in those spots or the people that are working in those positions are in their own column here as well. And then that corresponding time type if there's anything that affected that specific schedule in terms of time off, trades, signups, events, things like that, those are all gonna pool down here on the bottom from the scheduling side. Uh, we've been kind of looking at this from the scheduling point of view this entire time. Uh, I'm gonna jump over and, and show you what our reports look like based off of what's on the schedule. Uh, my two uh, that I see most utilized would be our summary report and our scheduled time report. Anything that's on the schedule is automatically going to funnel into this, the schedule time report here. Most of our departments like to look at this on a month view, a week view, or a pay period. Uh, you'll notice now when we look at a given week, for example, uh, or a, a pay period, depending on what you define the pay period to be, it's going to start to show you how many hours did an employee work in that range of time. So Nick Alston worked 184 hours in this 30 day stretch from March 15th to April 15th. In addition to that, we can also go through and tell the software that we don't necessarily need to see the regular time. So we don't need to see those 80 hour work weeks or 80 hour pay periods. We just wanna see anything that affected the schedule on top of the regular pay. And if we go that route, you'll see here, the, or the reports start to show you vacation, sick leave, any time we put someone back on the schedule with that callback pay or that differential pay shows pretty clearly here on the reporting side. The last report I do see quite a bit of use out of is our system log. Our system log is a little bit more of an audit trail. This is gonna keep everyone accountable in the system. It'll time and date stamp every single action that's taken in the system. It'll tell you who took that action, who it affected, what they did in the software. Uh, it even tracks unique logins. So as people log in and make changes to the system, uh, that's always, uh, they're always held accountable here in the system log. To pair with our system log, I do see a lot of our departments utilize one of our communication tools here. It's called our required message tool. Our required message tool is a little different than most of our notifications. The difference being here is that this one doesn't go out as a text or an email. So this one's more internal, uh, but whether you want to make sure all of your employees know about a policy change, an upcoming meeting, uh, some sport, sort of uh, department training, when you send this type of required message out to all of your individuals, the next time that they log in, whether it be from their phone or from their computer at home, they're gonna see this big yellow banner and it doesn't matter what Nick Alston wanted to do in the software. 
you'll notice they can't bypass that yellow banner until they click that that yellow uh, agree that they've read and understand that message. This is also a good place here to point out that if Nick Olson is logging in from their mobile side, they'll also see that type of message and they can't get to their actual schedule on their phones until they agree that they've read and understand that message. That's their key to get into the software. From a cell phone side, this is a quick view at what that cell phone looks like. You'll notice Nick can see his upcoming shifts. He can see some of his available trades. He can see any open shifts or upcoming time off that he has right here on the dashboard of his mobile side. Keep in mind that our system automatically knows whether you're logging in from a mobile uh, or a tablet versus a computer. So it's gonna automatically put you into our optimized mobile web version. So it's not an app that you need to download from the Google Store or Play Store or anything like that. Uh, if Nick Alston wants to take a look at their full April month calendar, they can also do that here as well. And very similar to the desktop view, they can go through and click a day, submit that trade or submit that time off for some day in the future. Uh, a lot of times the end users, 95% of our users will actually live on that mobile side day over day and, and never even need to see the full site in the first place. One of the last things I wanted to point out here uh, comes with the system. This is actually uh, in addition to the scheduling side, but if you have any forms that you want your members to start to fill out electronically, uh, we do have this forms uh, uh, management tool that you can use in the system. Uh, because we've seen so many departments use our forms tool, just here recently, we've created a very large sample form list where you can go through and, and start to see how other departments have used our forms, how they have set those up and kind of use those as a starting point to see what type of forms could you possibly use in the system. This will cut down on how many uh, paper sheets or how many manual forms your members are submitting. On the healthcare side, uh, COVID-19 screening. So if you have to still screen your employees for them to work a shift, certain fitness, certain uh, self-screening, things like that. You'll notice once you create those forms in the system, then what your members are gonna see is this form that they can fill out electronically. And you can route these uh, notifications to the right supervisors as well going forward. Uh, COVID screening, equipment maintenance requests. Uh, if you guys have certain computers or phones that aren't working, uh, that's also a good use of the form section here. The last couple of pieces of the system, an internal storage where you'll have an internal uh, library, uh, 200 gigabytes, where you can add as many documents, pictures, videos as you'd like to in the system. And the benefit here is because we're web-based, your members will have access to those files right from their own phone or right from their own computer at home. Uh, we see a lot of departments that put training documents, certain um, meeting reminders or certain meeting minutes, things like that will, is a good place to use the storage. Similar to the storage, we have something here called discussions where you can keep track of internal talk tracks, uh, almost like a forum thread where you can start a topic, you can allow members to comment on that topic. Uh, daily journals, weekly journals, uh, interesting, uh, notes from supervisors is a good place to keep track of that, very similar to an email thread. The very last tab here in the system, and this is one of the most important tabs in the entire software, is the help section. We put a very large emphasis on uh, self-help videos, blog articles, webinars. So we actually host a webinar very similar to this uh, once a month that focuses on a specific part of the system. And then we invite all 2,500 of our customers to come and watch that webinar. Uh, but one of the biggest parts of our help section is our physical staff. So uh, whether you're trialing out the system, whether you are a customer that's been with us for 10 years, uh, we have a very dedicated support staff available by email, phone number, chat here. We always want to make sure that our customers are comfortable with the software. And, and anytime someone 
runs into a question, our preference is that you just uh, reach out to us and we'll walk you through that question in the first place. That's kind of a high level overview of the entire system here. Uh, for the most part, uh, we've been living on this, this generic demo. Uh, I also want to point out that this generic demo itself is something that you can capture or you can get your own generic demo right from our public website at www.aladtech.com. Uh, that will allow you to go and play around with the system, play around with that generic demo. But at the same time, if you ever want to reach out and get a custom demo with your own names, your own schedules, your own shifts, things like that, I would highly recommend reaching out to us, uh, having a quick conversation, and we would be happy to get a custom system set up so that you can play around with it and actually have a, a couple week trial to make sure that a lab tech is a good fit. I'm gonna quick uh, take a look and see if any questions came through. Uh, but with that said, I think this wraps up uh, the webinar for today. I'll keep this live for a couple of more minutes uh, to see if any specific questions come in. But I wanna thank everyone for joining today.